Welcome to The Sarah Scoop Show. I'm your host, Sarah Roman, here to give you the scoop on all of your favorite things. Welcome back to the Sarah Scoop Show. Today, I have Jason Dick from Big Brother here with us to share his story. Hi, Jason. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Sarah? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for chatting with us this morning. Yeah, you bet. You bet. So where are you talking to us from today? I am actually setting in my pickup because it's the most quiet because my cows are bawling out the outside, and I, but I'm in my driveway of my house, and I was, I was just getting ready to grab Oli and walk him to uh, the grass pasture. So Oli was on your list of things you'd bring into the Big Brother house, correct? <laughs> yeah, he was, and I absolutely would have had, they, uh, had I got him talked into it, but I, I couldn't quite get that done. So tell us, how did your journey start with Big Brother? What inspired you to go on the show? And just kind of talk us through the whole process. Well, you know, I, I, the whole decade of my 20s when I was, you know, bull riding and, I don't know, just being a, a waspy, crazy cowboy, I, I tried out for every reality show that there ever was. And I never <laughs> had any traction whatsoever. So when I had the opportunity to try out for this and uh, to kind of see it through, uh, I, I just bit on the cookie crumbs that, that, that they left. And I, I thought, well, I didn't get it just by doing raw videos and, and cold casting, uh, show calls. So I, I thought, man, if they were, if, if, you know, if they looked, they, they looked up whistle nut and they said, Hey, you know, we're going to be in your area. So I made sure I got there. So then did yeah. you go to an open casting call? Yeah, I, I did in Des Moines might have been structured just a little different but it was a but yeah it was when they had come to Des Moines and I showed up there yeah so oh fun so when you found out you were going on the show did you already have a strategy in mind to play the game no I absolutely had no strategy in mind to play the game I'd never watched the show because and I honestly thought that it was not even going to come to fruition anyway I just figured I'd burn a couple hours it was going to take to go do the dog and pony show and just you know, play my, play my hand again. And then, uh, and you know, I didn't, I actually hadn't really read into it at all just because I'd tried so many other times at various other uh, reality shows that I, I, I wasn't even thinking it would happen. I was just, I, you know, I just, I just was doing it. Cause I thought, man, it'd be cool to get on a reality show once in my life, but I didn't, I wasn't really holding my breath at all. After talking to some of the other people that have also been on Big Brother, even in your own house, um, people have just kind of described persistency as key and then also like being yourself. Since they are casting right now, is do you have any tips for people that are going through the process that you went through last year? Yeah, especially during the casting right now. I mean, these people are, they are, they can tell right off the bat if you are who you portray yourself to be and, and if you, if you believe what you say. Uh, if you don't believe what you're saying or you don't make them believe what you're saying, you don't have a shot. You have to be authentic and genuine or, in my opinion, just completely crazy enough to where you believe you're crazy too, right? So I, they want, they don't want, I guess they don't want just regular joes they want regular joes in the in the terms that they, that you are who you say you are but they don't want a bunch of posers because posers they you know they wear out of character you know what i mean because it's it's a dreadful strain inside that house and and it's boring for the most part so if you're if you're trying to keep up a charade uh you're you're just gonna you're gonna you're gonna give it up and then then there you are in the middle of the house and it's just not gonna work and they don't want that either so they want people that are that are legit and kind of I guess resourceful and inventive because even even like me I guarantee you I'm a I'm a loud wild mover and a shaker. I don't slow down and I don't weaken. And so to, when you cage me I don't just go to sleep. I generally wind up and try to entertain myself uh just because I'm like oh my gosh this is you know I to try to just to try to keep myself moving or doing something. So, and they need that because the house, there's not a whole lot of room in there and there's, and there's a lot of time. 
So they want people that are going to not just lay down and go to sleep because they don't let you sleep anyway. But they, and that's boring to watch. So you have to be and no, I say kind of know your uh, know, know, know your lingo, know your verbiage. Right. I mean, anybody can Google something and talk the talk, but they want to know that you practice it. Like if you're like, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a cowboy. I can back that up. Right. So if they ask me a question. I don't just use a bunch of ands, ums, and thes. Am, um, the, yeah, um, I, well, I ride horses. Um, I do work. You know what I mean? They don't want to hear that. That's not boring. That's not, in, that's not insightful and it's not entertaining for anybody. So, no, you know, know your lingo. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm a cowboy. You know, I strap on my, my, my spurs. I ride horses. You know, I, I cinch my lad, go down tight. My bull's a double bread wrangler rivets on son, a little yellow jacket. He's got a motley face, a crooked flat horn, a banana horn. You know, he's kind of slap sided, but he's got a big hump and he's about 2000 pounds of just twisted steel and bovine sex appeal. You know I mean? They want to hear you say something that you understand. So has yeah. your life like changed? Are you back to what you were doing before this show with the rodeo and all that? Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, that's how I got on the show was because, I mean, they didn't they didn't make me Big Brother didn't make me awesome. I I was I made Big Brother awesome. You know what I mean? Like, maybe I don't really know if I made Big Brother awesome or not. <laughs> but I was doing I was doing me way before I did Big Brother, and and I travel up and down the road all fifty states in Canada. In fact, I go to Hawaii in July to uh, do a rodeo out there and I'm an auctioneer. We have a ginormous auction tomorrow actually. And so, I mean, I, I do, I do what I do all the time. And that's what was appealing for me to go on the show. Right. Uh, I don't, I don't sit around and wait on stuff. Um, I just don't like if it's not, if it's not turning and moving forward, even if it's moving backwards, I'm, I can handle that because I can reprogram and try to shift a few things to make it move the other way that I want it to go. But if it's not moving, I am absolutely not a fence rider, and I, I do not wait around. That's probably a fault of mine uh, because sometimes I might bail too early. That's why I'm you know, the, the player of all, the master of none, so to speak. But I'm working on that master part. I've tried to pull all them irons out of the fire and just kind of keep my auction and my rodeo ones in and, and just hone them a little bit. So that's one thing I've learned. But, uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm always doing me. Good, good. So that's good advice for people that want to go through it. They need to just be themselves. That's, that's so when, when you found out you were going to be in the house for the summer, you got the key, what was going through your mind? what was going through my mind was I'm going to be gone for three freaking months and my wife is not pregnant. And I was pissed about it. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. That's what made that moment probably so special and go viral on all the social media outlets. Right. Was because I was going to ask you if you, so for people watching, Jason found out he was going to have another child while he was in the house. So yeah. tell us, like, yeah, I keep going on that because that was so well, that, cool to watch. Well, that was legit because that's what was going on in my life. I was like, we have an awesome son, and I didn't understand why we didn't have another one on the way or whatever. I'm like, man, what is the holdup? And we were having a little bit of, uh, about it. And then when I when they were like, yeah, you're going on the show, all, all I could think about was when. And they're like, right now, today, we're taking you. We're kidnapping you. And I'm like, well, I got I got some work to do real quick. I was like, seriously, I, I can't leave. I'm like, my wife is not pregnant. I'm like, this, I can't leave. I'll be gone for three more months. That's three more months where there's going to be no shot uh, pregnancy. And I was actually, I was kind of pissed about it. So, but I, I was, but I was super excited, obviously. I'm yeah. like, I, I didn't believe it. I honestly didn't believe it. Uh, I didn't know what that key was. And so when they when they hid that key in my makeup bag, and I know that sounds weird, makeup bag, but my face paint bag, uh, and I opened it, I'm like, whose is this? And they were like, that's yours. I'm like, it isn't mine. I'm like, it doesn't have my name on it. That's weird. <laughs> and they, you know, they're they're recording, right? 
and they're yeah. they're got the audio and they're and they're like intent and they're super like <gasps> you know here it comes the he's gonna be like yeah but i hadn't watched that portion of the show at all mm-hmm. so i didn't know what was going on and i'm like i'm like no it's not mine and they're like jason it's yours <laughs> like like you know and so they're trying to be real quiet that producer's like you know please catch on please and i'm and so they paused it and they were like jason we give you a key to let you know that that's the key to the house so you they're like didn't you watch the show i'm like no uh and then then i was like oh so then they were like oh god you know, so they did kind of get the uh, authentic surprise, but I was going to take off and jump in my pond, and they're like, no, don't jump in your pond. You have a $1,000 microphone on. So I, like, ran, and I was like, Err. but anyway, so, yeah, it was kind of funny that, that I didn't know that that was the, the shtick, you know, to get on the show. Uh, but, yeah, because I was thinking about other stuff, and I didn't really believe them. I didn't believe that they were actually casting people anyway. And yeah. I thought that they, you know, because they, they tell you a bunch of goofy stuff to keep you, you know, guessing mm-hmm. so then i was like oh you expect me to believe this like i'm like whatever all my buddies were like a key <laughs> bunch of cowboys out here standing around talking bulls and you know fighting that mexican fighting bull i mean we were legit being cowboys so i mean none of us were in the frame of mind like looking for a key get you know, so it was yeah it was pretty comical so when you found out your wife was pregnant and you were in the house, did you, were you like in shock? Yeah, I, that's why I was like, you know, my, when, when she wrote that Gatlin's going to be a big brother and you have to win, I knew instantly. And I'm thinking, oh my God, how did I pulled it off? Like it, it must've just been a stroke of genius, you know, that last whatever, because I mean, we, uh, up, up until, you know, like two weeks before we, we weren't pregnant at all. Right. And so I was like, it had to be within that last couple, couple weeks, or maybe even that day that, <laughs> that it's, you know, that it, the conception <laughs> happened. So I was like, ah, uh, yeah. So it was totally legit. And I think that's why, and that, you know, that's that kind of authenticity is right. what they want. And that's what you want to bring which is pretty tough to get that authentic because that was, that's like, there's no such thing as a surprise anymore. Right. But that was a legit surprise. Like I'm the guy that's always trying to pull off surprises because everybody has their phone. It's too easy to call double check Facebook message. You know, every, no one can keep a dang secret. So that that's why that moment was so rare because it was, it was a total real surprise. Yeah. Um, did you feel like you were at a disadvantage not watching the show when you went in to play the game? Or do you feel like you were at an advantage? I felt like I was at a total disadvantage because now, now mind you, they, they, they were like, Jason, you have to watch, you know, season 18. We have to understand that you understand that you understand what's going on and what's about to happen to you. Right. And so I, I did get it on my phone and I was trying you, I wasn't really watching it. You know what I mean? Like I thought they just wanted me to understand the premise. So I wasn't just sitting there watching it. I was just kind of trying to, I mean, it was honestly, it was boring for me. I was like, you just wanted to like play the game. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, the comps were kind of cool. I was like, I get it. I get it. You know, you just, I said, I don't need, I understand social situations. You could literally blindfold me, tie me up, truck me across the country or across the world, dump me out and I would survive. I mean, I would probably have friends within 30 minutes or a job in 45 minutes. I would actually probably have a job before I had friends. You know what I mean? Like you can't, I, there's nothing that can stop me, slow me down, hold me back. I just adapt instantly. Uh, And so I wasn't really worried about it. I was like, honestly, I got this. So I'm like, that's fine. You know, and then they'd be like, well, who got voted off? I'm like, uh, and they're like, Jason, you literally have, you know, we need to know that you understand what's going right. on. Right. And I was like, okay, okay. So, but I honestly, I honestly feel like it, it was probably, I, I honestly feel like it was a, a disadvantage, even though I feel like I got along really, really well. 
Yeah, um, you made it pretty I, far for never like following the show, like watching right. it. Right, and I and so I don't know. That was just dumb luck, I think. Um, but because I, I honestly feel like I had I, but maybe not. I just really don't know because it's it's tough to know because I would have been. I was just super trusting. So right. had I watched the show, I probably wouldn't have been trusting at all. And so therefore I would have acted different and things would have changed and I might've got dumped out quick. Right. Like, I really don't know. I was just like, ah, you know, why would they lie? Well, I mean, I mean, we're seriously in this trap and you literally need to kind of, I thought it was all about, I, I was like, it's just, you, you kind of find the people that you want to team up with the ones that are beasts. Mm -hmm. And, and then you just beat it out in the end is what I was thinking. I'm like, because the only fair way I'm an auctioneer, that's like the most fair game on the planet. So I was like, uh, it, you should build your alliances and then battle it out. And then the best athlete or the smartest person or the best one at comps and the, in the heat of the moment situations is the winner. I was naive to that. I, you know, I, I, uh, I mean, I'm for Pete's sake, I'm 38 years old. I should have known better. Right. But <laughs> I, it was, it just, it was, it's not that way. It, it should be that way. And it can be that way. If you can trust the people that, I mean, you're the ones that make it. The people on the show are the ones that make the season every season. There's no rules. It doesn't have to be a lie, cheat, steal game. It could be a competitive beasted out game, or it could be a, you know, vote out all the all the beasts and then just kind of be friends and and talk your way through it and just have like, you know, like the popular one wins. I mean, there's literally a thousand different ways you could play that game, and they're all right. It's because, however, the people in that season decide to make it. So, I don't feel like I had a advantage or advantage really. Yeah, so whenever you were talking kind of like it is a social game and you and Alex kind of partnered up, was that at the very beginning when you first entered the house, you immediately partnered up or do you feel like it takes a long time to build those alliances? No, it was like five seconds in, I swear, Alex was like, you and me, we're going to the end. And I was like, why? And she's <laughs> like, you're huge and I'm really little. She's like, the big and tall, that's the combination. And I'm like, really? She's like, trust me. She's like, I've watched the show. And I, so I was like, ooh, she watches the show, right? Then I'm thinking I could use that because I – and she's like, man, big and little always win because, you know, for the – like I can handle all the short stuff. You can handle all the tall stuff. And, you know, and then we could just mentally if you're if, – if you have any horse – you know, like mental horsepower at all, like we'll be fine. And I thought, okay. And I thought uh, um, a, a man-woman relationship would be yeah. – good because i mean we're not going to try to like have a whizzing contest and who's got you know who's like we won't be battling it out like trying to compete against each other uh i just thought that'll be i thought instantly i thought well and i didn't want to be the one i didn't want to be the one you know be seeking somebody out because i didn't really know what i was doing so i was gonna sure. wait a while i was just gonna wait a while and she she just was like no this is happening i'm like Okay. <laughs> it seemed like every time we watched you, you were like in a very good mood, having fun. How did you keep that positive attitude? Like when you started feeling like people are talking about you or trying to vote you out or anything like that? Yeah, you, you literally have two choices every day. You can either take what you got and make the best of it, or you can just be a crybaby pee pants and, you know, be butthurt all day. And, that literally does no one any good. And I, I'm a, I'm the guy that is like, I want resolution. Like I, I, I don't like drama and I don't like problems. I'm the guy that wants to fix and solve problems. I like a challenge. Uh, and I like a uh, high, high intense situations where people are freaking out. Cause I'm like, I got this. Watch me work. Watch me work. I got, and so, but I'm like, it, because when I'm, when I'm in a bad mood, I want to, I'm like, I want it to be over. I want to find the root cause and I want to handle it. So like if someone upsets me, I want to just have a fight. Just, let's just beat each other up and then shake hands and be over it. Well, you can't do any of those. You can't solve a fight or a confrontation any way that we do here in there. So 
you know, you can have a yell scream match, but that doesn't do any good because when I when my when I get revved up, I want to get physical. So I knew that I I had to remain calm the whole time. And so the way to remain calm for this guy is to just work around it, not even worry about it. So I, and I and I told him, I said that you won't no one will upset me in there because I can't handle it the way I want to because I just signed that big fat contract. So I was like, You're, they're not going to ruffle my feathers. I'm like, I can literally, I said, somebody can yell and jabber in my face and I'm just, I'm not going to la- listen to it. I'll just stand there and I'll go somewhere else in my mind and I'll handle it after the show. <laughs> so that's, that's what I did. <laughs> Um, what can you describe? So as a viewer, we watch it and we're like, oh, I could do that challenge, you know, but obviously it's a lot harder when you're actually doing it. Can, can you describe one of the challenges for us? Maybe your favorite or the most difficult? Um, I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of super intense. Like, and I felt like a lot of them were kind of a, a weight, you know? And it's hard to stay focused, which that is a thing. See, they, they, they have it all figured out. Like, mm-hmm. it's – they know – get out of there. They, they know how to work you on all angles, you know what I mean? So I they knew that I would be super charged up for all those – no one would beat me on some of those really intense – so – they would, you know, they don't want to have all those challenges like that. So they know that the ones that drag out and take forever, I'd be more like, you know, this is so, why is it taking so long? Um, so they, they try to work against you because they want it to be fair for everyone. Thank you again to Jason Dent for being a guest today on the Sarah Scoop Show. We loved learning about his journey on Big Brother. 